Hey guys, great to see you. Welcome to Theory for Guitar Players. Now, don't run away just yet. Hear me out, all right? Because generally speaking, when people hear the word theory, they run for the hills. And understandably so, in a sense. Because if you've got the option between picking up the guitar and starting to learn something that you would like to play straight away, or on the other hand, sitting around reading about musical theory, it's a bit of a no-brainer what you're going to do. Generally speaking, when we learn, what we want to do is we want to be able to play the things that we want to play as soon as possible. And theory doesn't really allow us to do that. Now, that doesn't mean that we should discount theory, because if we do, at some point further down the road, that attitude is really going to hold us back. So that's why I'm going to put together this series of videos, none of which are going to be more than five minutes in length, and then that way, we've got a far greater chance of remembering the key points of each lesson. And by the end of it, it's going to help you become a far better musician. It's going to help you in many ways that you may not realise already. Now, you're not going to need any previous experience to follow this course. So you could just be an out-and-out -out beginner and have picked a guitar up for the first time. Or conversely, you could be somebody who's played guitar for quite a long time but never really looked into theory. So, whatever category you fall into, this is going to help you in some way. Okay, so like I say, we're going to start at the beginning, right? And we're going to start with the names of the strings on the guitar, because that's probably the most fundamental thing, right? And then this way, we're going to be talking the same language throughout the course. So for anybody who doesn't know, the first string, the thinnest one, is called E. And then the next one is a B. And then the next one is a G, that's the third. And then the fourth is a D. And then the fifth is an A. And the sixth is an E. Okay, now I know some of you will already know that, but for those of you who don't, it'll be useful to know that. And not just know it, but remember it, okay? Because that's how we're going to be referring to things. Now, when I'm teaching children and things like that, I kind of tell them to use some kind of rhyme to help them remember it. Now, for the children, as I say, I just say, Easter bunnies get drunk at Easter. So maybe you can come up with something a little bit more colourful than that, right? Or whatever helps you remember it. Okay, so hopefully it won't take you too long to memorise the string names, all right? And like I say, using a rhyme is really helpful. So now we move on to the next and the final thing for this lesson, which is the musical alphabet. And when you think it, it's quite an incredible thing to think that anything you've ever heard musically is made up of just 12 notes. That's all that exists, 12 notes. So our next job is to understand and know what those notes are. Now, fortunately, it's not too difficult at all. So if we take a look here, we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So where do these sharps and flats live? Well, let's take a look. Let's start with A, right, given that it's the first letter of the alphabet. In between A and B, we have either an A sharp or a B flat. Two different names, but the same note. And I don't want you to worry too much about the whys at the moment. We're going to explain all of that further down the road. Now, in between B and C, there are no sharps and flats, so not too much to think about there. In between C and D, we have either a C sharp or a D flat. And then in between D and E, we have D sharp or E flat. Then we move to between E and F. And that's like B and C. There are no sharps and flats. So there are only two places in our musical alphabet where there are no sharps and flats. And that is between B and C and E and F. Right then, moving on to F and G. In between those two notes, we have F sharp or G flat. And then between G and A, we have G sharp or A flat. So hopefully you'll get that down before too long. And I'll see you shortly with part two.